<laughs> oh, I should move this over. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. How are you today? I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today to actually dye some yarn, not talk about another family emergency or anything like that. Um, I know that a lot of you have been wondering, my foot, I mean, it's still broken, but I'm able to get around a bit better, which is why I thought that it would be fun to dye some yarn today. Now, I'm not quite ready to do the big uh, celebration live stream, but maybe within the next week, I'll have the like stamina to be like up and down to do all the, the dyeing projects that I wanted to do in one go. But today, I thought that we would have some fun with some sprinkles and to dye multiple skeins of yarn to sort of create a set that would be good for a faded type project. And I'm realizing that I don't have the comments up. Um, yeah, good morning, everyone. Yeah, so the foot, the foot is doing better. I actually slept without the boot on last night. So that is a really, really nice, uh, <laughs> a really, really nice thing to be able to do. Um, the one thing that will be different today is normally when I do this picture in picture, I like will hop up and dye yarn and I'll sit back down on the floor and I'm not so sure I'm going to be able to do that a lot today. So we might not get like another look of my face until the end because if I'm sitting in a chair, I can't really get, since this is my laptop on a chair, I can't really get it to where you can see my face very easily unless like you're looking at the ceiling, which doesn't work so well. So <laughs> that's going to be the main difference will be that I'll be sitting in a chair more than on the floor today. But I am really, really excited to dye some yarn. And so I guess, yeah, I, I just, it's been a really, really busy week. <laughs> Let's see what's happened in the last week. Um, okay. Yeah. So what happened to my foot? In the last week, I launched the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. You can see the link in the video description and in the chat. Um, and the store features a lot of the hand dyed yarns that I've dyed in the past and some upcoming Chemnitz tutorials videos. And I know it's a little weird to be selling yarn that I'm teaching you how to dye yourself, but part of the purpose of this is a, so I can make space for more hand dyed yarn for more videos, but also this is a way that, um, another way that you can contribute to, uh, financially contribute to the like behind the scenes materials and equipment that I use in these videos. Plus you get some yarn in exchange. Um, I know that some people aren't really interested in like doing the monthly kind of contribution like there is through Patreon. Um, so the shop is a way that, you know, you can, as, as you feel, as you want to, you can buy some yarn and contribute to all of this fun stuff that we do here. Um, but with the foot, okay, so I launched the shop. Um, then we hit 5 million views, which is totally thanks to all of you guys. Um, that wouldn't happen if you didn't like, comment, share, subscribe to my videos. So thank you, thank you. That is a huge milestone and I am so excited to have hit that. Um, and then last Friday, I was gonna do a celebratory live stream, but on Thursday night I broke my toe. I broke and dislocated my fourth toe. I ran, sort of like stubbed it on a wall. I went one way, the foot went the other way. And so now I'm in a boot, but I'm actually able to put weight on the boot now, which is good. Um, and hopefully I'll even be able to drive next week, <laughs> but yeah, but I'm not going to let the boot hold me back for so long. I did start, um, a new knitting project. Uh, I kind of pushed the things in my queue aside and decided to start working on a shawl for myself. And I've been sharing pictures of that on Instagram and on the kind of Facebook page. Uh, so if you want to follow along, you can see that there, but once it's done, since it was, um, I use hand dyed yarn uh, for this project. I will share like the, the finished project um, here on the channel uh, when I'm done with it. But yeah, so uh, I'm gonna stand up in a second, but yeah, we've been, we've been having a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, but yeah, so now I'm like, I, well, I don't think I can really get the boot on camera, but it's huge. 
Um, thankfully, the break is, um, I mean, it's like a complete fracture of the, of the toes. It's sort of like right here. Um, but it should heal totally fine, and I should be feeling better in a couple weeks. Um, so I am... Well, I, I don't think I need a knee scooter or anything because I am able to walk a bit now. I'm just slower and getting up and down might be a little harder than normal. <laughs> but anyway, I am, um, oh yeah, yeah, I've got little minis, um, polka dots and little minis in my dress. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited to dye some yarn. So I am, well, I guess before I stand up, <laughs> I can talk about the project a little more. So I said that we're going to use sprinkles to do this sort of faded dye. I've already pre-soaked the yarn. Um, we're going to be using Knit Pick Stroll Fingering yarn today. And the main reason for that is that's the yarn that I had downstairs. <laughs> I have a whole bag of it downstairs. So I'm like, aha, this is what I can have access to. Unfortunately, like my dye, like my Jacquard dye socks and stuff are stored under a sink upstairs. So I can't really bring them down easily right now. Um, but yeah, so I have three skeins that I've been pre-soaking in some tap water, plus I think it was two tablespoons of white vinegar. I'm nearly certain that it was two tablespoons of white vinegar uh, instead of three. But generally, two to three in the in the pool, like tap water, um, is around what I do. And so yeah, I'm gonna kind of like make this up as I go along, but I envision creating these three skeins where one has more blue speckles, one has more pink speckles, and then the, we have like an intermediate one in between. And so I think that we should get something that's a really, really fun sort of coordinated set. So if you wanted to do a, even a small project, you could do it with all three yarns, but you could also do a larger, um, a larger project, so a larger shawl or something. But um, anyway, I am now gonna stand up, so. And I'm going to turn off this little camera so that way you don't see me. Oh, no, wrong camera. <laughs> Try to do that. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think this went through. I do have a crutch right here. I will be able to get up. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, that was goofier than I had expected, you guys. <laughs> goodness. It's going to take me a little time to get back into the swing of things, isn't it? Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to do today was to try to use a little less plastic wrap. I am planning to set the heat of all of these yarns in the microwave, but I am going to use, and I think I'm only going to be able to do one at a time in the microwave, but I'm planning to use like a little bowl and one of these like silicone covers. Um, because since I'm using the sprinkles and this isn't a hand-painted technique where I really need to keep things even more separated, um, so I'm not having like short color transitions, I thought that it would be a great candidate um, to try to eliminate some of the plastic waste. And so I've covered my work surface with this shower curtain, um, but that, that is my plan. Um, um, well, so yes, the, the black sprinkles, so the, the sprinkles that I have today, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use these, these green ones, but I've got Wilton in, uh, so I've got the blue sugar sprinkles, some purple sugar sprinkles, or I don't know if they call it violet, lavender, they call it lavender, and then I've got some pink sugar sprinkles. I also have some black ones, which surprisingly are very opaque. You don't quite get black from it, because um, I saw a comment there. The, and I think that the ingredients might be, the ingredients are, oh, oh, the, I can see the ingredients in Spanish. So the ingredients on the black sprinkles are red 40, blue number one, yellow number six, and yellow number five. So this is very, very similar to the Wilton's Black icing color the like the discontinued shade um but you know you won't necessarily get a true black with it um it's really hard to get a true black with food coloring um oh i looked and i was like wait why am i seeing myself and then i realized 
Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness, you guys. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad to be to be back. Um, back in the swing of things. So my plan is to do a little bit of black all over, you know, mostly blue on one, mostly pink on the other. Maybe I'll do purple throughout or mostly purple in the middle. I'm still sort of with a lot of things like this, especially with hand painting, I sort of have a, I like to have a rough sketch of what I want to do. And then I sort of let the materials like feel the way I'm going to proceed, um, which I know sounds like a little silly, but uh, that's sort of the way, <laughs> the way I do things. And then the yarn today, I already mentioned, it's three skeins of the Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. And this yarn is, I don't know if you guys would be even be able to read that, but it is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And there is an affiliate link to this yarn in the video description. And actually, I will pop one into the chat as well. Because um, I think I have to do the like really long link. Um, Yeah, so I do get I do get commissions, but I've been using Knit Picks yarns for goodness since basically since I started the Chemnitz blog altogether. And yeah, I only discovered that I could actually officially become an affiliate marketer with them last fall. Um, so yeah, but it's nice to uh, have have some things that. Um, are based on the supplies. Okay, here is my. <laughs> oh no, I can't see. <laughs> what I'm doing. Oh, it got dark. Um, I'm still this webcam. I'm still working with the like getting the levels and stuff right. Uh, okay, maybe that's a little bit better. <laughs> just like Bob Ross. Yeah, well, I, I got a question today that I thought was a really good one. That's like, how do I come up with my techniques? So Dye Pot Weekly 39 came out this morning. And that was one where I, um, I took some pre-soaked yarn that did not have any vinegar in it. I uh, hand paint, used like a toothpick to apply some concentrated icing color to it. And then I dip dyed it to create a really unique colorway. And so I got a question of like, you know, you do a lot of unique techniques. How do I come up with them? And honestly, like that, the idea for that one came from when I was doing some of my hand painted speckles. Cause so I was like, Ooh, I wonder what would happen if I were to dunk this in some water, how would the color spread out? How quickly would they strike to the yarn, etc. cetera. Um, and so very frequently each dyeing video I do, I tend to end up with, two or three ideas or variations that I want to do after that. And so that's sort of one place where my inspiration comes from. Another place my inspiration comes from is your questions. Um, I get a, you know, I get a lot of questions and, you know, have you ever tried X, Y, Z? And sometimes like I wasn't necessarily interested in dyeing yarn with avocado. I liked the results other people had, but I wasn't sure how much interest there would be. But I got kept getting enough questions about it that I was like, oh, I should give this a try. And it was a lot of fun. And I'm really, really glad I did. So um, sometimes like the questions, I get questions for things that are already on my list. I always keep, I have a list of all the suggestions that um, I get. But so sometimes the suggestions will help me move things sort of like faster up my queue. And what did I do here? Uh yeah, so your comments and suggestions and feedback really do make a difference when it comes to the content here on the channel. So I could um, put this through the salad spinner to remove a lot of the yarn. But since we're using these sugar sprinkles, we need there to be water present. So that way the sprinkles really dissolve. Um, let's see, when did I set... I'm going to go ahead and pop, I think, two other skeins in the soap, just in case. I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to do 
Um, <laughs> but I'm planning to keep going and playing as long as my foot tells me I can. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, inspiration comes from a lot of places. Like sometimes, like, you know, you might see a pretty picture of something, whether it's yarn or not. I think recently someone shared in the Chemist Lab Facebook group that they were inspired by some chickens that they had um, and wanted to create some colorways inspired by like the natural, the gorgeous colors on these chickens actually. Um, so, you know, looking outside is a great place for inspiration as well. But I know that um, I personally really enjoy sort of thinking a little bit outside the box and sometimes, like with these sprinkles, the results are so pretty that I know that I need to keep, like I need to do even more and more and more of it. So, but the nice thing about this one today is that uh, things can be, yeah, this, is, this will be a fun one, but I guess I do want there to be some separation in between them. But faded projects are all the rage right now. So I thought it would be fun to uh, use one of our fun, silly little techniques to create something that we could use that could be used in a project like that. Um, okay, let's see. Um, oh, my Bob Ross. Um, I'm feeling better. Yeah. Um, your list keeps getting longer and longer. Yep. Um, I feel like my list is getting longer and longer as well. So in terms of, so Knit Picks actually, they are having a wool yarn sale right now. Aha, aha, they announced um, the May sale yarn of the month is Gloss. Um, so Gloss, the, the Gloss line is 30% silk. Um, so it's 30% silk, 70% merino, and it's shiny and soft and ooh, awesome. I was almost expecting it to be a cotton one that would be on sale this month again, or like cellulose or maybe an acrylic. But this is exciting. This is a great one to dye. And <coughs> it tends to be a little more expensive. Um, so it's nice that you can get it 20% um, off. Um, but on top of that, Nitpicks is having their uh, like a, up to 40% off their wool yarns right now. So that's a really nice... Uh, a really nice sale and so uh, I need to place place an order <laughs> so yeah but the I already placed one order I'm trying to make sure that I've got everyone on all these guys on camera there we go um, I've already placed one order from this like wool yarn sale but I need to get some more is there a way to add sparkle or a sheen to the dyeing process um, Oh, you got another grab bag? Woohoo! Um, those grab bags are a lot of fun. Uh, the, so as for adding sparkle or sheen to your yarn, the best way to do that is to use a yarn that has sparkle or sheen. Um, so Stroll Glimmer has the silvery Selena through it. Gloss, this gloss line, they have gorgeous, gorgeous sheen to them. Um, and even Galileo, which is 50% viscose from bamboo, has a lot of sort of like shimmer to it. But there will be a video coming up at some point where I use a metallic food coloring to dye yarn, and all the metallic comes, comes out. Um, so. Oh, I'm glad. Oh no, your sprinkles failed? Um, Nicole, tell me a little bit more about your conditions. And oh, that's maybe a little heavier than I wanted to do with the black. That's okay. I'm gonna do a little bit of black, I think, all over, which will be sort of like purplish. See, this is why I say like, you know, we kind of make things up as we go along. <laughs> because, you know, I was like, oh, okay, that was a little heavier than I intended. So therefore, all over, let's go a little bit heavier. Now, when hand painting yarn like this, I've laid these yarns out a way that we're only seeing sort of half the skein. And if you, like, you might end up with like, the way this is right now, I would end up with black speckles on one side of the yarn, 
but not necessarily the other. Um, and so I will at some point need to flip these uh, so that way we can get, um, I, will, I will want to flip these at some point so we can get like more throughout because you know if we look at the underside it's very very white right now and we will want some of the color to be throughout the yarn. But the reason why, and I don't think that there is, it's possible that there could be some, yeah. Um, the reason why I do pre-soak these in vinegar is because there's not any acid in these sprinkles. So therefore, we want there to be some acid sort of throughout. But I really, really like using these sugar sprinkles. Um, I think that they create these, especially on a superwash yarn like this, they create gorgeous, discreet little speckles. And you almost cannot see. Uh, let me reduce the brightness again. Um, da, da, da. Let me see. There we go. Okay, now, now you should be able to see the blue a little better. Um, uh, da, 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 I'm looking. Yeah, the grab bags are a lot of fun. Have I ever thought of dyeing alpaca wool stock yarn with um, Wilton's food coloring? I have. I've actually broken violet on that. Um, let me see, actually. Um, I, I've used the imagination. So it was a nylon wool. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. I'm going to copy into the chat. Um, here is an alpaca blend that I did. Oh, it won't let me do that. Um, let me see. Let me try again. Okay, there, I, I was able to post a listing um, from my Etsy shop where I used the, an alpaca, an alpaca blend. Um, because you use Will of the Andes yarn, not superwash, bigger sprinkles, like the, yep, um, very wet yarn, a lot of sprinkles, and washed, it was a rainbow sprinkles, and you got all pink and a hint of blue. Uh, did you pre-soak, Nicole, did you pre-soak your yarn in with some vinegar? Um, because so the sprinkles will spread out a lot more on the wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn, the non superwash. Let me see. Actually, let me grab, let me grab a cheap skein right now so I can show the difference. So my shop inventory was supposed to move upstairs, but since I broke my foot, it didn't. Okay, so here's two skeins of yarn that I dyed with sprinkles. Um, <clears throat> this was from the Valentine's Day special. So this one, um, which has the more discreet speckling to it, is the superwash yarn. And then this one, where the color spreads out a lot more, is the 100% wool yarn. Um, I think that maybe if you were to up the vinegar content a lot on 100% wool yarn, maybe you could get some more little discrete specks, but um, this technique tends to work better on sort of like the super wash and stock yarns. Um, it still works fun. It's a lot of fun on the, on the wools, but yeah. Um, so then again, then you sprayed with water and vinegar before microwaving. Yeah, so it's possible that you didn't leave the, the sprinkles on long enough. Uh, okay, so this one, I'm going to have some purple. I'm going to put some purple sort of here in this pink. Just a little bit and a little bit of purple over here on the blue.
and I'm realizing, I'm like, you know, so this is a really fun one. It looks way subtle on camera. Um, I'm going to do a little more purple over here, I think. But I do want to do sort of a light touch of the blue, sort of like every so often. Very light touch of the blue and the pink on the center one. Yeah, so I feel like where's my so, I mean, this is again a very, very subtle uh, color way. You could, you could absolutely dye the yarn before you start adding these sprinkles. Um, oh, funny. Okay, I definitely need to add some more pink up there. Um, you could dye the yarn, say like a pale blue, a pale blank, pink, a gray, before you start adding on all of these sprinkles. Whoop, that's not even necessarily a light touch. And by doing that, um, you know, you could have more of a background color, but you will, I do tend to observe that the colors sort of spread out a bit um, as I am doing this. So I don't think I've done like some vastly different ones like this all at once. And the nice thing is since the yarn is wet, the sprinkles sort of stick to it right away. I'm trying to get like a, there we go, a cover photo <laughs> for the stream. Um, yeah, post, post your yarn in the lab page so I can see. Um, the, yeah, I've only, I'm not sure how deep with the, like the long ice cream sprinkles. I'm not sure, oh, I want gloves. So I'm only using gloves because I don't want to dye my fingers. <laughs> um, the, the only reason with the non pareil or not non pareil um, with the like longer ice cream sprinkles, I don't think that those have quite as much food coloring as some of the other ones. So I am now flipping this over and we want to try to give um, these colors like access to as much of the yarn as we can. So we might, even though this is like a full flip, we then might shift things further so that way we can kind of get the colors uh, that we that we want. But the other fun thing about this is that because like this one in the middle has some colors from both sides, we don't really care if things, um, uh, that there's overlap when I am shaking on these sprinkles. But let's see. <coughs> yeah, so I think that if you are worried about shaking too heavy, and you can see I'm really holding this sort of horizontal and very for this black doing a very, very light sort of shake. Um, but you could totally um, pour some into a spoon. Some people like to mix powders with salt. The sugar sprinkles are heavy enough that you don't necessarily need to mix with salt to get a light application. But yeah, so there's just a lot of variety to what you can do. But I do find that these tend to have like comparatively there's something, maybe it's just that the black sprinkles aren't as shiny, but that to me, they always feel a little bit like flecks of obsidian or something. They, they look really dark. Whereas like the, the purple and the blue and the pink feel a lot more like a pastel, if that makes sense. So doing some light purple on these two ends, which, you know, even to me right now, when it's just on top, it barely shows up. Um, so if you can't see it very well, I think it shows up a lot better as it gets wet, if that makes sense. But, 
Do, do, do. Okay, it's like, where is my blue? The fun thing is like, you know, when they touch, like when one sprinkle touches multiple strands of yarn all at once, then you get like a little bit of color, sort of like all through it. And so that is just something that tends to then be a little fun. Okay, and then heavier, put the pink over here. Do, do, do. Okay, and in a second, I'm gonna start looking for patches that need some more color. But let me just check on the chat. Wait, um, hi, welcome. <laughs> yeah, the foot's, the foot's, well, the foot is slowing me down. <laughs> I don't want to pretend that it's, oh, why did I take the gloves off? I don't want to pretend that it's not because I'm definitely slower than normal. But I was so disappointed with having to cancel the, the live stream last week that um, I was excited to kind of get back into it. And actually, looking in these sections, the coverage is pretty good. The place where the coverage might not be quite as good is near where the ties are located. Oh dear. But it is okay, I mean, with the speckled yarn for there to be some sort of white patches. Um, but you can kind of go through on these edges. Basically, I'm looking for clumps of white because that's what I don't really want. Did I already put a little bit of purple on the side? I almost don't see it. I'm going to put a little bit of Okay, so the blue is looking pretty good. The, and the nice thing with there being sprinkles on the counter is that as I'm sort of looking through it, instead of adding more sprinkles, I can also sort of tap it, if that makes some sense. Um, but the, the, the purple sprinkles should probably break a bit too, which will be really kind of fun. Um, oh dear. That was a big section. That is okay. Yeah, but the blacks, um, you can't really expect to get a true black, but you can see I'm starting to get some streaks on the counter. So if I want things to stay more discreet speckles, I need to be a little careful. Um, but even touching the yarn to itself, you can help get some colors sort of throughout. Um, but picking up some of this yarn or some of these colors from the counter or from other sections of the yarn, there we go, can definitely help. And I will, I've pre-soaked some other yarn. So while this, well, after we've got these ones all cooking, I'll probably do, um, some non, just some random fun, clean up my mess kind of, kind of stuff. But what we've got here is definitely, um, oh yeah, we're, we need some, you know, so we're looking again for like big, big white patches. Um, There we go. All right. So now, I think, what's funny is this purple really is sort of a lavender. It is a lot more quiet than either the pink or the blue.
All right. I am going to start, I think, with the blue. Um, so I have now my, my bowl. And I don't really want to get sprinkles on the bottom. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to carefully pick this up and bring it to the bowl. And then as I put it down, I'm like, oh, there's a spot there that could use. I'm trying to do this one handed spot here that could use a little more. So I just sprinkled a tiny bit more blue sprinkles on top. And now I'm going to use my like thing and see if I can get like a decent. Yeah, that's a nice seal. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start microwaving this for two minutes. Um, you definitely don't want to leave it. And I'm double checking the seal once I've popped it in the microwave. You definitely don't want to um, look at all this blue on the counter. You definitely do not want uh, to when it comes to the microwaving, um, you want to make sure that it is sealed somewhat because you do not want like, the yarn to dry out and it to get scorched. Um, so that is why I sort of do things like that. Um, good morning, everyone. Yeah, we're doing sort of like a speckled fade sort of set with three different three different yarns and sort of like a pinkish one, a purpley one, and then an intermediate. And so with this one, and again, I'm not wanting to set it on the counter. Um, so off camera, I'm adding a little more purple sprinkles onto the top of this yarn. Um, and the reason why I don't want to set it on here is I don't want the sprinkles to get on the bottom of our bowls. Because I don't want to bring spread mess around. <laughs> but then here is our pink skein. And I am just sort of popping up. Ooh, there's. Wow. Can't have that now, can we? So I'm, I'm also curious. I haven't done this with the blue sprinkles before. I'm not sure how much the blues will spread out. So that's another thing I'm really curious about. But the fun thing is I can already see these black sprinkles starting to break. Um, so I'm seeing like a nice little blue halo around them. But let's see, I don't know, can you guys see that little halo? Let me go test the temperature. That's warm and definitely still damp. So the two things I'm checking for are, is it heating up and is it damp? So let's see. Yeah, I'm using, so I'm using like a silicone top. And the reason why I'm doing this today is because of this technique, I don't care like that the yarn is folded on itself. If I was doing a yarn, and maybe we'll do one towards the end, but if I was doing one with like a blue section, a purple section, and a pink section, then I might want it wrapped in plastic wrap so that way I can keep the colors separate from one another. But when I'm doing sort of an all over sprinkle kind of thing, it doesn't matter if the parts touch. So now, while that's going, I need to clean my work surface. So, meeting me, do you have a guess on how I'm going to do that? <laughs> While I was filming, I put in another skein of scroll, thing, scroll fingering to, um, to pre-soak. Oh, and I have that here. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, this is a shower curtain. Okay, so I have a new skein. This is sort of like my dry rub techniques that I've been playing with, but since I wanted to put some more sprinkles on like another skein of yarn, I figured why not use it to help clean up 
all this stuff first. Now, this will mean, because like I'm wiping instead of just like awning the sprinkles, the colors will be, um, you know, we've got some pastel and some more like spread out color sections through here. Um, Cause you know, the sprinkles don't dissolve right away. So if you, the sprinkles will, how long did I do that for? Oh, okay, that's about to be. Um, but actually this is working pretty nicely to clean up the shower curtain. <laughs> now these, you definitely, definitely will want to wash all of these yarns after. And what's funny is that I now see a lot of like clear sugar crystals sort of around, but this, and again, I'm not sure how well this reads on camera, but we've got some like nice pastel colors sort of over this. Um, I guess there's still some tricky edge, but okay. So here is the yarn that we just heated and, uh, So if I take off the silicone cover, there's only one little, there's only like a tiny little splotch of color on it. But this yarn is really warm. This is our blue. But you can see there, most of the sugar crystals have now dissolved. Um, so there's very, very little left there um, in terms of the, sort of like the crystal color, color. Now I am using three different bowls for this one, but I should be able to reuse some of these bowls as the yarns cool off. So I just place this cover onto my pink. And I'm going to do the same thing. You could use a steamer basket. And I considered setting one up, but I think that the steamer basket I had in here would only fit one skein of yarn at a time. And with the microwave, things get hotter a bit faster. So, um, No matter what I do and how many times you tie, the yarn gets tangled at the bottom of the skein. Ooh. Um, yeah, I would add more ties. So if you notice in some of my videos when I'm washing the yarn, I try to pick up the yarn always at these tie points. Um, and that's mainly because I know that that's where I can safely pick it up um, without, come on, sprinkles. I'm going to have to somehow figure out how to wash the floor my boot. Um, excuse me. What am I getting text about? Uh, oh, thanks Amazon. <laughs> yeah, so um, I am bad and I make a bad example because I don't add more ties. But the way that a lot of people will add ties in a proper way is if you separate the yarn into some like maybe three sections and sort of you can do a butterfly tie. Really go like over and around. Um, and that will help keep things from getting tangled. But in general, like if I'm doing like a rub technique or something, I always try to keep a hand on my skein. Um, and I haven't really had any trouble uh, winding one of these up after the fact. But hopefully if there's one that gives people some issue, people will let me you know. Um, yeah. Oh, you do do a figure eight tie? Um, Huh. So then I'm not sure what, in what step, I mean, maybe when you're washing, even with a lot of ties, try to keep like a hand on the skein and not, um, so then like when I'm washing, you know, when I'm doing this, I'm always keeping it somewhat ordered, I think, versus sort of letting it fall free. And even with like my more dry rub techniques, I still always try to like see where the skein is. Checking on this. Alright, I'm going to do some more time. Yeah, so if you're trying to do, and you have a lot of people maybe over for a dying party, I find that the microwave can be uh, faster than a, than like the dye pot. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, you know, I know that there's one person who got scorched yarn in the microwave before and by all means like use a steamer basket uh okay so let's do 
got some hints of color on here. I thought I had another color of sprinkles, but um, okay. So the blue was brand new. And so like, how much did I use? I've got like the bottle is mostly full. The purple and the pink have been used in a lot of other projects. Let's use a lot of black actually. Sort of go heavy on the black. I just love how stark the colors look. Uh, flip it over. And so, you know, you can spread out, the more you spread out the yarn, the more like access you can kind of have straight away when you're adding these sprinkles on. But I also think that the less you move it at the beginning, then the more like discreet the speckles will be. Because you saw like when I was rubbing this on the on the counter that things weren't any longer, um, things didn't look so sharp anymore. And that's because, you know, I was really spreading the color over the yarn. So sometimes just letting it sit for a bit can help. Maybe let's do a little bit green. I am curious with the blue, how much, if the, we'll notice that the colors spread out a lot more than say with the, some of these other colors. Yeah, so I'm now adding some of this green, which has, oh, it has interesting. So, the ingredients on this one are yellow lake, blue number one lake, um, and then black color, red 40, blue one, yellow six, and yellow five. And for the dark green. That is pretty interesting to me. Um, so I'm curious what kind of stuff we will see from this. I do know that the lake food coloring colors, which I think typically are used for things that are a little less like water soluble maybe, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but they were in, they do like, you can dye yarn, but I think in general, um, those are something that can give yarn a bit of shimmer as well. Yeah, but it's like cookie decorating. It's kind of, it's kind of fun to see what you can get. And I mean, you can totally, and I've done, I think there was like a, a holiday cookie special that I did where I painted, um, you know, I did like a red end, a green end, and then I did rainbow sprinkles, and then I think green sprinkles in different patches. So you can absolutely mix this up. Okay, so that was our total of four minutes for the pink and black. Um, and again, so here is my silicone. It's nice and damp and warm and there's almost no color on it when it was directly touching the yarn. Um, so I'm now adding the cover to like our intermediate sort of purple friend. Um, and I'm going to start microwaving that one. Now the ones and the blue is cooler so I'm bringing that one over. Um, it does look, I do see discrete specks right now. But I'm not picking this up yet. I don't want to smudge things. It's warm. It's damp. Things are still dissolving. Um, so if there's sugar crystals that are still solid, as they are in this state, we could dissolve and get speckles. So patience can be can be a bit of a factor here. But yeah, I totally see. So many of these black sprinkles have dissolved and I'm seeing some little bits of breaking. Um, I think that this is going to be a really, really fun colorway. Uh, oh, yes, I'm using colored sugar sprinkles. Um, and I started off by dyeing, um, oh goodness. Oh. Uh, That's my mom, which is only important. Oh, I'm going to sit in my chair. I was like, where am I going to go? Um, it's only important because she's picking up my kids from school later. 
Uh, yes, getting a tangled mess can be really, really frustrating. And it's for me, especially because I know I'm setting a really bad example by not putting on more ties. Um, but I think that, so for dip dyeing and generally hand painting, I'm able to keep things ordered enough while I'm dyeing. For some of the more random and wild techniques like the dry rub and stuff, those, um, it could be worth adding more ties. Um, so have I dyed yarn in a crock pot? Uh, not yet. Um, it's definitely on my list. Um, the list that keeps evolving and changing. Uh, that and doing some more citric acid and vinegar comparisons are things that I have been, oh, that was only two minutes. Why is it not that hot? Um, so I know my microwave really, really well. And that's why I'm comfortable. I, even, though I, even though I know it well and I know I could do four minutes directly without scorching yarn, I still do two minute intervals. Um, because I know that, um, because I know that that is something that, you know, it, it's, if you're unsure of your microwave, start in one minute intervals, you know, sort of like if you were melting chocolate chips or something, you want to check frequently because you don't want to go too far. Um, but yeah. Okay. Let me see. Might, if I try this. Oh, you can kind of see me. <laughs> I need a chair. <laughs> okay, sorry, this is goofy. But I actually, I think that I am going to, while we're waiting for the microwave to go, I'm going to send you guys to a brief commercial break. Um, and so thank you for, if you want to show us up, thank you for watching. Um, things like this help. Um, uh, things like this tend to, they, they help like keep everything going. So thank you. Um, and all right. normally I try to wait to press the button for, um, I normally I try to wait, like I try to time it so I can see because things, um, I think I pressed the button at least. Um, oh, well. <laughs> we'll see, but I will be right back. Um, I'm going to grab a bit drink and <laughs> but yes thank you Brian for putting up with the ads and stuff these are all things that help keep the show running <laughs> mm. but it is getting steamy in here okay that one was hot so do take care when you're removing warm things from your microwave. Uh, and I don't think there's even a good way for me to like come and show, but again, you can see like my silicone cover is nice and steamy and warm. And now I just needed to start like give these some space so they can cool off. But the yarn here, is really really cool and i'm not sure oh i don't want to get steam on the camera um so i'm looking the purple sprinkles break a tiny bit but it's a little hard the black ones break more uh with the purples it's much more subtle um the the breaking and you don't necessarily see it everywhere i think it depends a bit on how long the sprinkles have been on the yarn and versus and like how close to like adding the sprinkles did you microwave it. Um, Cause if you let things sit for a while, like we are on the counter, then that can give things a bit more time to sort of spread out. And I hid the chat from myself. So I'm going to bring that back around. Um, you probably order a spare crock pot from an existing Yes, I definitely don't do, the only things I do with my kitchen equipment are food safe dyes. Um, but if I'm using, you know, anything that has not been, like if I'm using RIT or Jacquard or anything else, then I definitely have a separate dedicated dye pot 
and actually, uh oh, sorry guys. There we go. Um, I actually think that I need to buy a second dye pot, uh, which I know will will keep because things are sort of taking over the house. Well, right now, so I was going to take this week and like reorganize like the my craft room, which right now has like boxes everywhere, and like organize get some of these things organized and out of the downstairs kitchen. But the the boot kind of. Um, Put those things. Uh, I need to fix my lap. Oh, that angle is weird. Oh no. Ah, the cord's in the way. Of course not. But yeah, the the boot kind of like put that like on hold. But I do have a, a crock pot that I would be totally comfortable using with some of these things. I think that in general, uh, using a crock pot is, except for the fact that the temperature is controlled, so you can keep it kind of low. It would be very similar to using like a hot plate on your countertop, um, which I've used minimally. Uh, the thing that I like about using the stove is you can turn off the heat like that. And yes, there's still some residual heat in the burner, but you can quickly adjust the heat if you start to go too far. And I think that that's a little harder to do in like a, on an electric hot plate. Uh, Yeah, well, when you're adding ties to the yarn, you don't want to make them too, too tight. So you make them too tight and you're doing some techniques, you'll get um, white spots. So that's why in general, things tend to be tied pretty loosely. Because you've seen that like, you know, in order to get some speckles in these areas, like where these ties are, um, you know, I needed to move it around a bit. Um, so, but you can take that, yeah, you can take use that to your advantage too and get some really, really cool effects with your dyeing. Um, what about adding sprinkles to the seam yarn? Yeah, um, I think that that would work. I mean, in one of the soft link specials, I uh, put a like a pan down, added boiling water, then added the blanks to that, and then added sprinkles, and that worked really, really well. Um, so I could, uh, you know, you could, except that it can be hot and harder to to deal with. Like you could pull, you could. Uh, put like the stuff in the microwave or take it out of the steamer pot and then add the sprinkles directly to that and the colors would probably strike pretty quickly. So, oh, no worries. That's what I'm here for. I mean, I like, I like breaking rules. I like thinking outside of the box and trying different things because that way we can learn what to do and what not to do. So for example, like the red synthetic dye more dye, can you dye wool with that? Yeah. Do I recommend it? No. Um, and that's because I ended up with a bit of a felted, it's, well, it's lightly felted. Like it's still knittable, you can still see the plies, but the yarn is definitely way more felted than any other yarn I've ever used before. Sometimes with non superwash yarns, you can see like after you've washed them, the yarns sort of stick to each other a little bit. And I don't even call that lightly felted. Um, it's just, you know, the, the nature of wool. When things are like truly felted, it takes effort to pull them apart or they start to look matted and the shape of the yarn starts to look different. Um, have I used a hundred and a thousand sprinkles? Sally, I'm not really sure what those are. Um, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm, I don't know if those are different terms for some of the, the ones that we have out here or if those are like a specific brand so that I am not sure of. Um, but yeah, post like maybe some links to them in the Chemnitz Lab group. Unfortunately, YouTube won't let you guys post any links in the chat, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, but I can post links in the chat sometimes. Some, some links it doesn't like me doing, like, but some things, some things I can do. Um, yeah, like the, uh-oh. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, like, for example, I can put in the link of my, uh, da 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 Oh, it's rainbow sprinkles. That's what you call them in Australia. Ah, yeah, um, I've done some like rainbow nonpareil sprinkles before. And I love it. 
Um, I can do the, I can put in the link to my new Etsy shop. Okay, I'm gonna get on the ground because this is, uh, I don't wanna use too many bowls. And of course, now you get to watch me like, there you go, that's more comfortable than sitting in the chair. And I like the camera angle better too. <laughs> Um, I wish that, ooh, actually, maybe I can zoom in while I'm down here. It was just, excuse me, hard to, no, not that camera. Um, it was hard to lean over the computer when I was in the chair. So let me see if I can, I want to zoom in a bit. So that way maybe you guys can see a little more. And let's do the tilt. Okay, maybe the resolution still isn't good enough. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if the resolution is good enough for you guys to really um, get a good sense of these like little, little specks of color. But while I'm sitting down, that might be a better view than just the whole countertop. <laughs> um, how much dye should I use to, for 200 grams of yarn to break black? Well, I like to use a quarter teaspoon of the Wilton's Black Icing Color for 100 grams. So I would use a half teaspoon for 200. Um, <laughs> your cream beach was black? Yeah, so hopefully hopefully that that helps. Um, the, um, the, the, Barbara, the problem with older crock pots is sometimes they don't work. I inherited two over the years, one from my mother-in-law, one from my grandmother, and then tried cooking in them only to realize that they weren't heating up at all. So that's the, the risk, but I do live near um, a savers. And so I definitely uh, will, I definitely kind of go time to time and look. And so some of my dye specific like Pyrex stuff, I got there and stuff like that. I'm a little more hesitant with electronics because you don't really know if it's gonna work. But uh, yeah, so I'm not sure if they test them before they, they put them out for sale. But for some things like with, if, for those of you that want like a dedicated dye pot, going to a second hand store or an estate sale or something is a great way to get a dedicated dye pot. So you can get a high quality pot for way cheaper and it doesn't matter if it already has stains on it. For me, the reason why I went for a brand new one is because it's been filming, I wanted, you know, I, I, I just wanted to have a new one for the video. Is there a way to use glitter and make it stick? Glue? But you don't really want to put glue on your yarn, so no. I mean, you could potentially get like a silver thread and then spin it with your yarn to like add some glitter to it that way. But in general, I don't think that there's a good way to get glitter to stick to yarn. Um, um, so will the specs, so these sprinkles, yeah, they stay, they stay as specs. Um, I would, uh, my, if you're, for the, some of you might not be aware, but I am currently in a boot cast. Um, otherwise I would hop up to show some of the finished yarn that I did with sprinkles with a very similar technique. I no longer have the sock yarn because that's one that's sold in the Etsy shop, but, um, yeah, the uh, the sprinkles will stay as facts. Oh, so that's to let you plug in and see if it works. Oh, that's cool. I haven't tried asking that, but also mainly I've only ever gone there with the kids, and so I, it's like an exercise of don't touch anything, don't break anything. Um, but yeah, the breaking black is is something that obviously I I really enjoy. Um, I will do, once all these yarns are finished, I'll do a recap with zooming in so you can get a better sense of the, of the colors. It's a little hard to see on the webcam. Um, but yeah, with glitter, um, and I will give a spoiler for the metallic food coloring. You don't keep the metallic shimmer. It's really cool when you wash it because you get this like really iridescent sort of water coming off, but you don't get the silver part doesn't stay. Yeah, I what is so I have a round, well I have like a multi-cooker. But I know people don't even use their Instapots for yarn. I just think 
Um, I mean, you can use your oven too. Basically, you can use any heat source. Some people have been doing some sun dyeing lately, where you put like your, your dye and your yarn in a jar and put it out in the sun all day. So there's different ways, like, you know, I'm not sure, like if you left like your yarn in some water at room temperature, like inside your house, if that, if all the color would eventually absorb, but you know, time is a factor and heat sort of speed things up. So I'm not entirely sure um, how much heat you need, but. Mm, be careful with ties. Don't use part of the ends tied together um, by the manufacturer because it can screw, skew tangle. Um, Yeah, I, have, I don't know. I've, I've been very, very lucky with uh, tangling so far. Um, your four-year-old is the same way. <laughs> yeah, we, oh my. Um, yeah, the, but uh, yeah, equipment, there's, I mean, you can you can do a lot with, with what you have. And so if you, you know, are replacing your crock pot, then that's something that's great to use for dyeing. Um, but I, I think that my favorite, like if I'm hand painting, in general, actually, I love having like a steam basket. If, so, if I'm having a day where I'm filming a lot of videos and doing a lot of hand painting, I might use a steam basket and I'll have like my big pot with a little bit of water and then I'll just kind of have that going all day. And as I do a project, you know, I'll start dying something else while something's in the steamer basket. Um, but the problem with, with the steamer basket is I can only fit two skeins of yarn in there at a time. In the microwave, I can probably fit three at a time. But I don't use, I only use food safe dyes in my microwave because it's one of the ones that's like kind of like built in. And so it's a little, since it's high up, it's harder for me to clean. And yeah, I mean, different people have different levels of comfort. Like I use my kitchen sink with commercial dyes, but um, I can clean that easily after, and I don't have any like food dishes in there while I'm doing it. Whereas the microwave is like higher up. Um, but I have considered getting a dedicated dyeing microwave, but I think in general, steaming is sort of like a more proper technique, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, but I guess now before I stand back up to work a little more on this yarn. Um, what did I do to get the boot? I broke my toe. <laughs> Fractured and dislocated my toe. That's why Friday's live stream sort of like went, was really weird because um, I ended up with a last minute doctor, like orthopedist appointment. And so I couldn't even pop on and say that the, the stream was delayed. I had to like, yeah, it was just, it was just hard. Um, but okay, I better actually check that in case it's my mom as I scooch over. Although it's probably like this has been shipped. Oh no, okay, it's good. Um, because it's like you need to know if I uh, have to find another way. Like the the main thing is I can't drive right now. So if it's my toe, I have to take off the boot to drive, and I don't think I can press on the pedals yet. But hopefully next week I can drive again. Um, but anyway, the. Yeah, it, it threw me. <laughs> the injury threw me for a loop, but I'm really excited to get up and do some dyeing today. Um, although the sitting down feels nice. So I might, maybe after this one, I might do one more because um, I pre soaked one more. But um, anyway, if I guess now it's time for my little like, hey, support cabinets plug. Um, if you are enjoying what you see and you find me entertaining and helpful, um, there are a few ways that you can financially contribute to Chemnitz in general. So one of the ways and a really easy way to give like a one-time contribution is you can buy some of the yarn that's now in the Etsy store. All of the, the yarn in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store has been featured in either a past Chemnitz Tutorials dyeing video, almost all of them from 2018, but there are some that are um, a couple years older. Um, and some of them are actually even featured in upcoming videos. So it's a nice way to sort of like give a, I know that some of you um, aren't necessarily interested in signing up for the Patreon where you give like sort of reoccurring monthly contributions. So the shop is sort of like a nice, 
easy way to do sort of a one-off. Um, another easy way to do that is in the chat, there's like a little dollar sign that's a super chat, and so it's sort of like a tip, I, I call it like my tip jar for these, but um, if, yeah, so all of these things, all these contributions and liking and watching the videos all helps me continue to buy more yarn so I can dye more videos for you guys. Um, so. If you were to buy some acetides, what dyes, what colors would I recommend for a limited budget? Um, I would probably go for some primary colors and black, uh, maybe black and gray. Um, if you have a limited budget and wanted to stick with five, I would, you know, go for like a, a red, a blue, a yellow. Um, but it depends on what your favorite colors are. Like if you really want to mix, um, red isn't your favorite, then maybe go for pink instead of red. Because it's, if you want to get like an orange, it's a lot easier to mix pink with yellow than it is to mix red with yellow because the reds are, to get a true red, they're so potent compared to say yellow. Um, but yeah, if you don't want to like kind of get like a whole library of colors, then I would stick with primaries so then you can try to mix them. Um, uh, the older crop box have non-removal crops. Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't checked or asked at Sivers what their return policy is, um, but that's where a lot of our donations go there. Um, although I haven't ever seen anything I've donated in the shop, but I haven't looked closely enough for that. Um, oh, fun! Uh, but yeah, so anyway, all this stuff and, you know, it's kind of like this, this video is brought, like, the... What did the like PS say? Like, it's possible from viewers like you, and that's really true. Like, I would not be able to continue doing this without all of your support. Um, and so, I really, really appreciate everything that everything that you do. I know many of you are patrons, um, and that's awesome. Um, I think payments will be processed today. If you sign up for the campus Patreon today, you won't be charged until June first. Um, but you can still get access to all of the rewards, um, all the video rewards right away. You just won't get shout outs or um, the Etsy coupons until uh, the next month. Oh, good. Um, yeah, no, I mean, you guys made it possible with the Kickstarter for me to start, get the equipment and stuff to start with the acid dyes. And I hope to um, expand like one thing that's a little hard for me to do is I, I'm finding myself buying new brands of dyes and new types of dyes before I've used up the other ones that I had. And so that is something that adds sort of like a setup expense um, because I know that you guys have, tend to have a lot of questions about different brands and stuff. And so in order, so right now I've only tried Jacquard acid dyes, but I know a lot of independent dyers use the Dharma brand dyes because for per dye, like for quantity, they tend to be cheaper and I think they have more colors. But I haven't really started with that yet. But anyway, I'm going to stand back up um, and zoom back out. Maybe I'll zoom back out first. <laughs> and then I got to pan back. Cool. <laughs> Oh man, sometimes I'm like, I could really use like a, a wrong camera. Uh, I could really use a little, ooh, you're doing it for stock like tomorrow? Oh, you're unraveling your first one tomorrow. Oh, hello, hello, welcome. Okay, we're doing sprinkles today and I am standing up. I promise I am standing back up. I haven't started standing back up yet. Um, but I do, I don't really use the crutch much anymore just when I'm, tired but it's handy for things like standing up because the boot makes it hard for me to sort of bend my ankle but okay let's see these are all still pretty warm let's see i don't think any color is coming off of my hands but i'm gonna go ahead and use a new bowl <laughs> so today we are also for those of you just joining so we're dying with sprinkles but we are also sort of avoiding, um, you know, to some extent, we are avoiding plastic wrap. 
um, because since I'm doing these sort of all over colors, I don't mind if like some of the sprinkles from this side get on that side and vice versa. So, uh oh, and I can't see the comments. Um, hello, hello, welcome. I, this is, so right now this is skein number four. Um, at the end, I'll bring out all the ones that we have done today. But with this one, I actually started by sort of wiping the counter of, of color. Um, you know, it's kind of like my don't leave anything behind kind of thing. And so right now I'm not rubbing again, but I am sort of pressing up these sprinkles. And this one I sort of let sit for a while. So a lot of the sprinkles that are on the yarn have actually dissolved already, but we used black and green on this one. So I'm now going to place it sort of in this bowl. And I'm going to use, oh, I'm trying to not get sprinkles all over my house. <clears throat> but I'm using like a silicone. Oh, Sharon, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm using this silicone um, sort of topper to microwave instead of plastic wrap. Um, because I've gotten, um, some feedback about people who wonder about doing some of these things using less. And so that is one benefit of the steamer basket. But in general, if I want colors to sort of stay separate, then I, um, if I want the colors to sort of stay separated when I'm hand painting, then I definitely, um, then I, then I still use plastic wrap. But, oh, good night. I know you're on the other side of the world, so good night. Thank you for tuning in. Um, but now I'm going to wipe this down. And I think I will do one more because I pre-soaked one more. But yeah, I, I wear out so quickly now. Let's see, it's almost a shame to wipe this up because there's so much color. So this will take me a, a moment, actually. This might be a nice time. Um, this is a nice time to send you guys to a brief commercial break. So hang tight. I will be back with Dang's More Yarn. As I clean up, I'm going to make sure I can see the chat. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of color, but I think it's interesting that the greens actually contain, um, black in them. They had it listed as an ingredient to sort of get that deep forest green. Um, I mean, it makes sense. I was just surprised. Okay. Well, you know, I do have washable rags that I was so good and I used them a lot like once and I need to start using them some more. So I kind of prefer like a little less waste. Oops. I definitely have sprinkles everywhere. But I found that this, so this is just an Ikea shower curtain and it actually sort of um, holds up pretty well from like all the color and stuff that I've done. I don't mind if there's like a little bit left I just wanted to do some, I want to do something a little different with this one and sort of do more of a repeating kind of colorway with the sprinkles. Oh. I think I've only done that one for two minutes. So I, all of these I've been microwaving for a total of four minutes. Yeah. And two minute increments until it's like hot to touch. And I think with some fibers, like maybe if I was trying to do this on silk, well, actually, if I was doing this on silk, I don't think we would get as discreet um, speckles as we're seeing here. I think that on silk, the colors would spread out a bit more because um, in my experience, the silk takes a little more time and acid for, uh, for the colors to bind. But um, while things are drying. I'm going to show you the fade 
that we've added. Let it go. Where is the? So I guess the, these are still a bit warm. So we did sort of like three different speckled yarns. We did this mostly blue, and then this purple with the hints of the pink and blue, and then a pink. So this is a a very subtle sort of sprinkle speckled fade, and there's speckles of black throughout the entire sort of like thing. But I thought that it would be fun to do like a little set that would be really, really subtle. I mean, you could in theory do one where you do like a ton of sprinkles, barely any sprinkles, and then um, uh, and then like an intermediate number of sprinkles um, to do like a different kind of fade. But I thought it would be fun and I thought it would be fun to do something that was more like a color fade versus like an intensity of tone fade. Um. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much for your order. Um, I'm now, uh, I'm curious which one it was. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, it is, yeah the all of the purchases from the from the Etsy shop it all like come comes back into all this and I'm almost I started with three tubs of the the yarn for the bestia like these big like plastic bins and I'm almost able to get it into two um which will help <laughs> but I might actually have to do a a restock soon because not because the shop is getting low, I think there's still like 80 some skeins of yarn, but because uh, I'm accumulating stuff again. And, ooh, okay, so I peeled off uh, the silicone thing out there, but this is the, this green and black one that we just did, which all over, like sometimes you see this back to be really discreet and small. But this one we let sit, and so the colors have spread out a lot more. Oh dear, that's hot. Oh, da, 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 da. Where did my oven mitt go? Oh, over here. <laughs> I was gonna come and compare that to like one of like the blue one that we did at the beginning, and I was like, that's a little too hot for me to grab. So you can see, like, you can get like pretty intense colors using sprinkles. So. It is fun. Oh, the blue is almost cool. That's that's nice. I should be able to like actually bring those out. Okay, so let's think about what we want to do. I think I want to do. I think I might want to do one that's a little more hand painted, and that we have like different color sections. Um, but. I'm still tempted to use no plastic wrap, and so they might not be clean, clean sections. Um, but I'm thinking, but, oh yeah, the Knit Picks, um, the Knit Picks yarn, um, the, the Knit Picks sale yarn of the month is gloss. So we will be having um, some fun, fun gloss, uh, gloss lace, uh, and lace, all the gloss stuff, so the silk blend. So I am pretty excited about that. And I had uh, as a Kickstarter goal to, you know, potentially add like the, or not a Kickstarter, as a Patreon goal, I had maybe to add like either some silk, a silk yarn, or like an alpaca blend yarn to sort of like my regular rotation of yarns that I would go and just sort of grab for these kinds of things. Um, I would have mixed it up today, except scroll is what I had downstairs and I'm not going up and down the stairs easily yet. Um, <laughs> but, uh, anyway, the, so I might've done something else, but the gl gloss fingering is one that I would let patrons vote on if we hit that first milestone. So, all right, need to decide. Ooh, I know. Maybe I'll do some like small areas of the black 
and then do like the pink blue Maybe I'll use these same colors, but I'll separate, like I'll maybe do three, I'll separate it into thirds with sort of the black sprinkles. Um, Woohoo, good luck with your breaking black for the first time. That is awesome. Okay, let's do this. Or, okay, so question for you guys, since we are live. Okay, so my plan is to do some black sections and then separate the colors. But do I want to do four sections? So like pink, purple, blue, purple, and have four sections like that? Or do I want to do three sections and do pink, blue, purple, sort of, and there's less like, you know, basically do I want to do sort of like a end to end where like things are sort of symmetrical across or do I want sort of the overall repeat to be longer? So vote, vote if you want, I guess, vote for either one purple section or two purple sections. <laughs> um, and that'll help me decide the way to do this, to do this one, if I'm going to divide it into like thirds or fourths. And you know, there might still be some like crossover between sections, but, uh, and there is a bit of a delay, so therefore, like now I'm sort of vamping, waiting to see if you guys have any preference. Um, trying the try to do the three. Yeah, I think I'm li I think I like the idea of the one purple section. Okay, I see two votes for one purple section. I think that's the way I'm gonna go. Um, and have it be like a longer. Okay. So I do. So if I do one like here, here, and one about here. Ooh, someone shared a picture recently in the chemist lab of dyeing yarn and they had like plastic wrap over like a quilting cutting mat. And I love that idea because then you like have some measurements. So then I wouldn't necessarily be having to like sort of like wing it with my thirds here. Um, one of each color. Um, yeah. All right. I'm going, cause I saw those first. I'm going for the one of the, one of each within the black in between. Right now I am just sort of lightly doing this to sort of mark my territories and then I'll go back in and sort of fill a bit. But clearly, okay, so you see that there's like mess. <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, I can go back and sort of like pick some of those up, but some black and stuff will migrate. So this won't. And then especially because we're going to be going into a bowl with no plastic wrap, colors will move around a bit. But yeah, it'll be kind of fun. So let's go ahead and do the, the purple over here. Um, yeah, the cutting mat is, I think, a really, really fun idea. So I think some of you might be on a bit of a delay. So the way that you can know that you are absolutely and currently live is by checking, like at the bottom of the screen, you should see live with like a little red dot next to it. And if you don't see that little red dot, then you are not necessarily like up to the most current thing that's being streamed out, um, if that makes sense. Um, so, cause you can still be watching like the, you can be watching it on sort of like a DVR replay kind of thing. Yeah, I think that the pink and blue might be a little bit bigger than the purple, but. So that's a lot of blue sprinkles, but that's okay. Yeah, it's definitely not as easy to control the sprinkles as it is to control other types of hand painting techniques. But actually, I'm going to leave the lids off because I keep like opening and closing and goodness me. Okay. <laughs> so this is the rough plan and I'm not even sure. Okay, let me adjust the... Whoops, that's not where I wanted to go. I'm gonna adjust the tilt. Um, 
or the pan, not the tilt. There we go. I know there's all these things I can do. Um, haven't done with the, the picture. Yeah. Um, my foot is doing better. So like I'm able to put weight on it, which is why I'm able to do this stream today. I will admit I'm starting to get a little tired. I think because I end up mostly standing on my good foot, even though I can have weight on the other foot. But also the boot is like three inches tall, which is hard. <laughs> um, okay, how am I going to do this? So I need to like, oh, I'll just sort of like flip and move that. Um, so the boot is like three inches tall, which makes things harder in the, in the sense that like, um, you know, I can't really stand with my weights distributed very well. Um, if you know what I mean. So this is going to be a really fun one. Yeah, the blacks like stick really, really fast. It's really cool how quickly they sort of start spreading out. I really, really enjoy these black sort of sprinkles. Well, you can see there I was touching it a bit. So then they actually like they spread. Those ones move fast. Um, so I think if you want more discrete sort of speckles, you need to move them a little less. Um, this all the yarn was pre soaked with let me think uh, about 12, 12 in some tap water with um, two tablespoons of white vinegar is what I started off with. And I did not wring them out a huge amount. The hardest part with sprinkles is sort of getting into this area where, um, where you have the ties, but you can see I'm sort of like moving it around. But and clearly, you know, I got some black sprinkles over there. Like it's not going to be a perfect color transition, but it should still be a pretty fun yarn and could create some like fun looking socks. And with the, so I think this is probably like a four foot skein. With this, oops, that's heavy. Um, with this yarn, um, you'd probably get like almost something like micro stripes of color transition. Um, but do do do. Yeah, so sometimes they spread out a lot. Like in here, I moved that one around more. Over here, we're getting a few more discrete specks from the black. But it just takes a little bit, a little bit of time. The black ones have a lot more. I think the black ones, and the reason why colors also spread a bit more with the black, is there is a lot more food coloring in the black versus say even like the purple um, or blue. And part of the reason for that is just that black is a darker color. So for it to not look gray in the sprinkles, you have to have more there, if that makes sense. So. Okay, and now I'm pretty happy with this actually. So I'm gonna let this sit for a minute. I don't think that the sitting step is absolutely necessary or um, is really important, but since I'm not using plastic wrap, letting this sit for a bit, letting these colors start to dissolve sort of in place, oh goodness, before I place it in the bowl can help. Um, sorry guys, I always have to make sure that it's not school. Um, um. Oh. So many calls today. Um, yes, yeah, so the, the, the sprinkles today are all Wilton sugar sprinkles. 
um, in lavender, pink, black, and blue. And in the fourth one, I use these green cake make, cake mate sugar sprinkles. So soon, I plan to do a video on making your own sugar sprinkles. Um, but let's see. Yeah, the, the boots are, are heavy. Um, oh, no problem. I'm so glad that you guys are able to join me today. It feels so nice to be like back in the in the swing of things a bit. Um, because I've been, yeah, I, I was just feeling out of commission and I was really, really bummed on Friday. <laughs> and so I'm not, okay, I'm going to put this in a bowl. I was going to wait a little longer. Um, yeah, because there's still like, it's very sprinkly. Um, I was going to wait longer, but I know that I'm going to sit down. And once I sit down, I don't think I'm gonna be getting up for a while. <laughs> so I'm going to get this in the microwave and I'm trying to decide how I want to put this in the bowl. Okay, I think that this is what I wanna do. I'm bringing the black sections together, bringing those colors together, and then sort of putting it in the bowl. <laughs> And that is the very scientific approach to this. So now I'm putting the silicone on top and I'm going to heat this for a total of four minutes in two minute increments. And it does create a seal. I just have to press it down. Um, but it keeps things nice and moist. Um, okay, I'm going to get this a little cleaned up. Please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I will pop back over to the, to the chat. Really need like a, it pains me to get rid of this sugar. Look at those cool colors. Um, but I am trying to keep things somewhat clean. Okay. I'm going to worry about some of that later. But I do want to try to make my own um, sugar sprinkles because can you imagine? I mean, the the lavender sprinkles are basically what was violet. But some of these other colors uh, that we do, like, can you imagine, like, creamy peach sprinkles? How cool would that be? So I just have to, I'm going to try it with a video form at some point. But, all right, I am going to show our faded, our faded yarns. Okay, so this was, we started off with sort of a set of three yarns. And so now it's, the yarn is off camera because I'm carefully picking it up. There we go. So I can have it in sort of like the careful skein. But so here is the, the blue. This is the blue and black. And this was one of the three that we started with. And so I'm sort of going to arrange this a little prettily into the bowl. Clearly, I still need to wash it, but I just had my fingers all over it and I have no color on my hands. Okay, so for one side of the fade, we did the blue. Checking on the yarn, the mat actually came up with a few of this, but. We are still nice and wet, which is what we need to see. Oh, let me see if there's any questions. Um, oh, you didn't break the black. You said there was too much dye in the pot, but you got a nice ombre. Yeah, so I always, if I see myself going too fast with the purples, I always wait until I add the last little bit until I see the, the black transitions to a blue. Oh, interesting. I'm not sure. Um, I hadn't thought about the silk adding strength to the merino, but that definitely makes some sense. Um, the gloss dies slower in general than say stroll and stuff. Um, but I've only dyed with it a couple times, but I really like it. Oh, here's the, the pink, the pink. And so when I, I keep saying black, cause I use black sprinkles, it definitely has 
like some of that broken black. There's like the, sometimes a tiny bit of a, the brown quality or um, so a little bit of a brown quality or a little bit of like a blue halo to it. Um, yes, Knit Picks is having, um, I think that there are, I think that there are, um, bit wool sale goes through the second, um, Kristen, but I'm not 100% sure. So um, don't quote me on that, but they are having a huge wool sale. So for some yarns, like if you didn't want to commit to say like the bulk, the bulk color, then you can sort of like play around and get like some smaller, smaller amounts. But for our, our fade set, here is the purple colorway. So I used the lavender sprinkles, but I also used some of the blue and some of the pink. So we've got this sort of like matched, or not matched, and I'm not on camera. We've got this somewhat coordinated set that you could use for a really, really, okay, I'm still not, <laughs> for a really, really um, subtle, subtle, subtle colorway, subtle color changes, but, okay, you are hot, taking this yarn out, and I'm not touching it, we're just going to let that sit, I will try to bring that up before I end the stream, um, but then this one right here is still warm, oh, no, she's still warm, um, so I'm actually going to put her back down, but this was the, the green and black um that we did and since we used a lot more of the black sprinkles you know you can see in terms of depth of color that um this one is a lot darker than the other two right now wow i really luck oh because there is one light behind you and i'm up there um oh thank you i'm glad you like it um where did i find the silicone lid oh goodness i i'm not sure um that i think i got that as a gift but you can find them all over the place um i'm double checking on the wool yarn sale the wool yarn sale ends tomorrow so may 2nd at midnight or 11 59 p.m pacific time um so there's still time there's a handful like soft links are on sale again uh, there's a lot of different stuff that they have in their in their sale and before i show oh goodness okay i'm sitting down i will try to show the last yarn again before um before i'm done but uh let me move myself there we go okay um yeah i'll try to oh and of course that <laughs> yeah i'll try to do that um bring that out one more time before we're done, but I just needed to sit down. Um, yeah, the fork and concentrated dye technique is really fun. I think that in general, because so, you know, people ask about like how I come up with ideas and trying new things. I started using, for one of the soft line specials, I used like a little paintbrush. And I think I actually prefer the paintbrush to the fork because I think it's in general less damaging to the fiber and I have a tiny bit more control over the color. But I haven't done that on a skein of yarn. I've only done that in like a long, big live stream. So I need to do that again in like a dedicated video. Um, yeah, the green one is really, really cool. I really like it. So if you, I know some of you are watching my live streams for the first time, which yay! Um, the, what I do after the live streams, because you can't always get the best sense of the color um, just with the, depends on how like the data, quickly the data is being uploaded. Um, but I always film a recap with the finished dried yarns, talk a little bit about the technique and show like more details in the yarns. So I will zoom in so you can really get a sense of these, of these speckles. Um, but yeah, I'm glad that so many of you were able to join me. I've missed, oh, I've missed this. Um, and it's funny because when I'm, when I'm doing a, li a dying live stream, it's pretty similar to what I do when I'm filming a video. It's just in the video, sometimes if I like stumble over my words or something, sometimes I will, especially like in the introduction and conclusion, film the same like thing many, many, many times. Um, whereas uh, with, 
oh, maybe that's what I should do, like, the, for the sneak peek behind the scenes, maybe I should do, like, one of my introductions. Um, <laughs> it's the, like, behind the scenes thing this month. For, for Pemmet's patrons, uh, people who sign up through Patreon, there's early access to one new video a month. And so when I finish May's early access video, the April early access video will then become available to the public, so no one will miss out on any content. Um, but there are exclusive behind the scenes sneak peeks. So while I'm filming a new like Die Cut Weekly episode or something, I will live stream just for patrons and then they have, they're the only ones that have access to that replay. So they can kind of see like me give commentary like about the technique. Um, it's sort of like an unedited look at the dyeing process um, with any flubs in there. And it's sort of a fun, um, you get to see like a new technique before I publish it. Um, because right now, like I'm filming episodes for June and July. And so that's a long time to wait and it's hard sometimes. So those are like some of the, some of the little perks that, that patrons have. But yeah, I think that, I don't know. It's weird. Like I, things, when I look back, sometimes I think I probably need to do a video about just like the, like the inner workings of of chemnitz because there's now like so many different things <laughs> you know like so we've got the patreon we've got the store now um which are you know it's different but it's still like related but it is weird as a fiber artist to be telling people like by showing my yarns being like this is exactly what i did to dye this yarn um so it's sort of funny, but I know that a lot of you that are buying these yarns are also doing it to support these these videos. But it's a little different because most like independent dyers, if you say like, hey, exactly what colors and how much did you use to dye this yarn, they won't necessarily tell you because you know they don't want they would they want you to buy from them versus like going out and recreating it yourself. They might absolutely give advice for like learning to dye and stuff like that, but I think that it depends on the like the questions like if you ask for a recommendation for like you know if you're starting up and like where to buy supplies they might help you with that versus like telling you the exact like formula that they use for their for their yarns so but whereas like i consider myself like a, a teacher and so like i have i have the the Cummins creation store now and i guess i'm talking about it i'll pop it in um hopefully that link works um, sometimes YouTube links do, yes, it's working, do strange, um, redirects. Uh, but even with the shop now, my focus, my primary focus is to create fun dyeing videos and to explore different ways to add color to yarn. Um, I think that if I was going to like go more into like the shop mode, then I would change the direction and maybe some of the types of yarns that I was dyeing. Um, but I... I'm committed to exploring a wide variety of techniques. And yeah, it's just, my, I have a lot of yarn now, so. <laughs> but I am glad, I mean, the one thing with like having the foot injury is that I can, it is giving me some more time off of my feet. So I'm having a little more knitting time, which I haven't had for a while because I've been wanting to like film or edit when I had some time. So yeah, but. I appreciate all of the support that you guys have shown me. Um, hanging out in these live streams with you is really so much fun. Uh, and now, right now, I'm sort of like psyching myself up to stand up again. <laughs> oh, goodness. But yeah, um, as always, like, let me know if you have any questions. You clearly, like, I, I try to respond to most YouTube com comments that I get. But if um, other ways to reach out is you can reach out to me through Facebook. Um, please message Chemnitz versus like my personal page because um, I might not see the personal message for a while, but on Chemnitz I usually get, I can usually see those pretty quickly. But if you want an answer like sort of immediately, um, join the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group because you can post a question and one of the other fabulous members, whom I know many of you are in the group, uh, if I'm like, not at my computer or phone, someone else sometimes can answer it right away. So like if you're about to start dying and you have a question, there might be someone who sees it who can answer it before me. 
and we've got like this fun community of Chemnitz fans that are all dying yarn together, and it's just fun. Um, I, yeah, when I, I, I keep saying this, but when I started the Kickstarter in September, I was hoping to like sort of give myself, have the like funds to start dying, making more dying videos, and then to hope, I was hoping like, okay, I wanna start posting a video a week. That was my goal. I had no idea of the community that there was here. And so I am, honestly, I am awed and grateful for all of your support. So, but now I will stand up and go get that last yarn. Um, but I'm not gonna show you my, but as I do it. Yeah, I'm about done. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm getting close to the like, go and, oh, I need to make sure I can see the camera. To go put my feet up. Um, oh, Suzanne, thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, thank you. I, I really, really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I, I honestly am getting much, much better. Um, it, it's just, you know, takes time. Okay, so here's the one that we just did. And there is, I should get a paper towel, but there should be um, no color or minimal color. Yeah, there's like, it's just wet. There's no color on the, on the silicone here. But I am curious. Okay, we're still really hot. Um, I am... T uh, I want to see like how much the different color sections stayed together. Oof. Okay, it's still too hot. Um, okay, I'll hold this up so you can see the like color sections. But I kind of I put all the blacks in one spot so that way there would be less black transfer around. But it does need to cool some more before I can comfortably handle it. But this one I can. Okay, so you can see here, unlike some of the other ones. There is a little bit of color on the plate. I'm not sure if that's really showing up. But with the nature of this yarn, it is still a little warm, so it's not a huge deal. I don't really mind um, like if those colors kind of get spread out and whatnot. Um, but yeah, the black and green yarn is really, really, oh, they're all fun. I am amazed that the purple is overall lighter than the pink and the blue. Um, tongs, oh yeah. <laughs> this is what I need, you guys. I love tongs. I was like, oh man. Uh, I just wanna make sure I don't. I'm trying to not tangle and I'm still semi okay oh come on I should have had a hot don't touch super hot yarn folks listen to what I say don't do what I do okay so um Yeah, actually, so there's some, I see some blue on the purple, a tiny bit of pink on the purple, but overall, the different sprinkle sections stayed pretty consistent with their color. The, I went a little wild with the black, so those actually spread out a lot, but I think that's kind of fun. Um, again, like, I will be filming a recap, and so maybe in a minute, I'm, I'm going to sit down again. Um, actually, I'm sugary now. I'm going to wash my hands and then sit down. <laughs> but I should be able to, um, yeah, I guess maybe I'm not going to, I guess maybe I should sign off because I should go sit down for real. Um, <laughs> I know, I know I'm, I'm bad with my, with my fingers. Um, oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> Scooch over. I'm kind of squatting. Yeah. I'm going to go, I think, and put my feet up, but Thank you, thank you everyone for joining me today. I had a blast and I will absolutely, absolutely, um, in a couple days, so what's today, Tuesday? Hopefully by Friday, I should be able to get a recap up. 
Um, basically, I have to wait for the yarn to cool off so I can wash it. Then I have to uh, wait for it to dry before I film the recap. But yeah, they came out really, really, really pretty. Um, yeah, yeah, the rubber gloves. I mean, the nitro gloves I used probably wouldn't help too much. I mean, I didn't burn myself or anything, but it's just like, I want to touch you, but you are too hot. This is what I'm saying about my patience, right? Yeah, thank you so, so much for joining me. Um, again, like there in the video description, there's links to a lot of stuff. Um, <laughs> but really, you should go check out the Chemist Creations shop. I mean, obviously, these yarns are not in the shop um, right now uh, because they are in progress. But there are a lot of a lot of yarns that have been featured in recent videos, like the yarn from today's Dye Pop Weekly is in there. Um, and so there's a lot of fun stuff in there. So check it out. And yeah, thank you, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. I, I had a blast. And it was nice to like feel like my myself again. But I'm going to go put my foot up. And yeah, I hope that you guys all have a fantastic day. Thank you, thank you. Um, I will catch you guys soon. Goodbye.